We've mentioned this before, shorting a stock is not for everybody, but there are 30 stocks with market caps over $2 billion that investors are betting against like crazy these days. The fifth most shorted stock is the recent IPO GoPro, while the camera maker has had the best IPO so far this year with a 175% return, over 41% of its shares are shorted. That may have been some influence in today's downturn, by the way, of 10% for that stock. Number four, insurance company Amtrust Financial Systems. Now, investors question whether the growth is sustainable of this company, and 43% of the stock is shorted. Number three, Myriad Genetics. The company has had a short interest of over 48%. Number two, the Chinese software company Cheetah Mobile. While revenue rose 139% year over year, over 48% of its shares are shorted. And number one, another Chinese company, the Craigslist of China, 58.com, second quarter revenue may have risen 84% year over year, but look at this, a short interest of 54%. Wow. Well, for all stocks, at least today, it really felt like there was so much volatility. And given that up and down movement, many questions now surround the markets. And investors are wondering whether now is the time to get defensive. Is it too late? Well, if you are wondering, it's not too late because we have right here a defensive portfolio playbook. Thanks to Jeff Reeves, Investor Place editor, joining us now. So I, I'm correct, right? It's not too late to get defensive. No, I mean, it's always a good time to kind of take stock of things, particularly the end of the year. But, you know, I've been kind of writing about this a lot uh, for the last week or two. Uh, today's move, I think, is a pretty pretty important move down. I think we actually broke through the 200-day moving average. There's a lot of people saying uh, on my Twitter feed, I looked at it on the way over here, that's the worst week that we've had since the 2011 kind of European debt crisis. Um, but the bottom line is that the writing has been on the wall for a while between fund outflows, rotation in defensive sectors. Um, it's kind of been rocky for, for a couple weeks now, since late mm -hmm. September. So uh, I don't think it's too late. But I think it is, you know, you know, time to get started about being prudent about where your portfolio is going to now, go. In now, getting defensive here. doesn't mean selling all your stocks. You've got a playbook and we're going to run through four different things just as investors flee equities, pulling two point one billion in outflows already for the month of October. You're saying that's not necessarily the way to go. Let's get to your first page of your playbook. Don't abandon all exposure specifically to U.S. stocks. Yeah, I mean, you know, on the lead up to this piece, you're talking about short interest. I don't really like GoPro either in front of the lockup for December. I'm kind of bearish on the stock. But the bottom line is that most investors that are out there, particularly smaller time investors, uh, you shouldn't really try to pick tops and bottoms. And it, in moments like this, everybody's an expert. You know, when we try to say that this is a bottom, this is a top, rather than try to catch a falling knife, it's mm -hmm. better for your long term performance to just keep averaging in, to stick with it. Don't dump everything. People who sell everything and buy everything because they think they know when a bottom is in, they're typically pretty long, wrong. I mean, even Wall Street experts. Mm -hmm typically underperform the market. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't overreact. I think it's important to be defensive, yeah. but don't panic. And let's, let's warn people that the futures did close way lower than what they had originally looked like they would close at. So maybe at the open tomorrow you might see a dip. Maybe. Uh, don't panic because you say stay in for the long term, which seems rather obvious. But now for part two, you say actually ramp up your exposure to a certain region, Europe. Yeah, I actually kind of like Europe right now. Uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about oil prices. Part of the reason oil prices are so soft because of the strong dollar. The dollar continues to move higher, uh, particularly with the Fed talking about tightening. And so Europe has kind of underperformed this year. Uh, it, it might be early to bank on a turnaround. There's a lot of talk about a, a triple dip recession in Europe. But the bottom line is there's going to be a tailwind uh, from the weak euro. The mm -hmm. ECB had a surprise uh, rate decrease. Uh, in September, the Fed is going to theoretically tighten in 2015. A, a, a weak euro is going to be a tailwind for exporters like Germany. Right. I like the VGK. It's a Europe-focused, large-cap European equity ETF. Uh, it's Vanguard. got some of the biggest. Yeah, it, it's it's really cheap because that's Vanguard shtick, uh, and it's got only exposure to the largest European companies out there. Again, I wouldn't go all into this and move all your money over to Europe, but now might be a time to start buying. I mean, again, it's underperformed. I think Europe is going to come around in 2015 and 16. Uh, and, and back to 2011, when we thought the world was ending in the Eurozone debt crisis. If you okay. bought Europe in, 20, in 2012, it was a pretty good time. I want to get through the next two. Number three, and it's tread lightly. Don't... <laughs> Get in there with muscle and blocking and tackling. Tread lightly in bonds. 
Yeah, I think, again, it's really important to look at, most people buy bonds with bond funds. If you hold bonds to maturity, it's a different story. But if you buy a long-term bond fund, you really are exposed to interest rate risk there. Right. As rates rise, your principal is going to take a hit. So I'm kind of erring on the side of short-term bond funds. One that I like right now is there's a Fidelity fund that's kind of in the sweet spot. It's a short-term fund, but it's high yield. Uh, so most of the durations isn't more than, than several months, but it can still give you a 4% yield. Again, you're not going to burn down the house here. Yep. And I'm not, I, I don't think the S&P is going to go to zero. So don't move all your money. But if you're looking for bonds, I kind of look for a, a short-term high yield fund like that Fidelity. Okay, one. so you've got Fidelity short duration. And finally, get defensive by averaging into certain areas that you're starting to warm up to, and that would be health care. Yeah, I mean, I really like health, health, health care broadly as, as a recession-proof demographic play. I mean, health care sales won't go away. Even if Europe does double dip, even if America runs into trouble next year, uh, seniors are going to continue to get older. They're going to need long-term care. They're going to need their medications. Uh, I think health care is a very good defensive sector. You can find some good yield there. Okay. Uh, so if you, if you want to go into the sector, I would, again, take a broad, diversified approach towards ETFs for the sector and kind of average in over time. time. I, get, I, I mean, I think I'm a pretty smart guy, but, like, I'm, I can't pick a bottom. Nobody can pick a bottom. So it, it's safer for your portfolio long term to buy along okay. the way. This so may not be the bottom. XLV and IYH. And if you missed all of his selections, we're going to put them on Facebook.com slash After the Bell. Jeff, good to see you. Thank you for helping us get defensive in a safe way. Thank you very much. See Jeff Reeves. David. Defense. I wish you could tell the New York Giants that. All right.